I thought I'd do a little video getting ready for tomorrow. You know, you guys got to do your trucks, get your trucks ready. Mom's got to get sandwiches ready. Joe's got to get Wander's products ready. I'm working on a few injectors right now. They come to me like this. Remember, this is the lifetime stainless injector block. Nothing brass about these babies. They're solid block of stainless. Lifetime guarantee. You'll see. Over the next five, ten years, there won't be a single one of you say it's blown out. I'll show you how we'll prove that later. Uh, but I'm putting a little O-ring on them right now. Let's do one here. I'm going to pass it on down the line. Okay, so this injector will end up over here a little into uh, an injector block assembly like this. So your choice, a male or female on the back end, leads up to uh, a built-in strainer. If your injector is not working, it's one of the first things you check is the strainer. I don't know if this is too tight to open. Yeah, it is, but here's what that strainer looks like in case you've never taken one apart. It's really important you guys understand these things. There's your little top hat strainer, okay? It should be free of debris. The two parts, front and back, screw together like that. You can just use a couple of crescent wrenches to get it tight and it fits into this assembly. And you got your foam sleeve, your steel handle. By the way, I've got a stainless uh, metal tube coming. I've been selling st steel like a dummy. I bought them here local in the US. Uh, good quality steel, because uh, when I first started making injectors, I heard about uh, on the boards, they were talking the brasses were exploding on guys. They weren't they weren't holding up and they were cracking at the back of the injector. So I got steel thinking that'd work. Come, got it from a plumbing company, but they rust. Several of you have told me that. I make my wash downers out of these things too. Anyway, I've finally gone to stainless. They'll be here someday. When they do, I'll give you guys free replacements. All you gotta do is place an order and say, hey, give me one of your stainless tubes. These will all be stainless here once I finally get my act together on this, this product. Uh, quick change adapter, put a wrench here, wrench here, or crescent wrenches work too, and then you can remove the injector block if it's not working for you, and swap over to a new one. That's the injector swap program. Talk about that a little bit in a sec. Uh, otherwise, before the quick change adapter, which is this little guy here, screws into the back of the injector, okay? Before this, all you had was the bare steel nipple screwing into the back. And the only way to get these two parts apart to uh, be able to switch out injector blocks would be to go home, put it in the vise, get out the pipe wrench, forget that. Quick change adapter, out in the field, you can now change your injector. If you've got the injector swap program going on, then you'll have a backup of one of these in your toolbox. Swap it out, keep on working. No reason to ever get shut down during the day over an injector problem again. Um, here's an, an injector assembly with the, the more common setup, stainless mail on the back. Uh, notice this uh, flow through quick disconnect on the front. Uh, had a customer buy one, calls me, and says it's leaking out of the front. Said, send me a picture, no way. Uh, he sent me a picture, but it had this stainless mail on the front. He had, he had bought from me and put a stainless mail up here. Well, remember, this is stainless. A stainless mail going there, it, that means stainless on stainless. Not a good idea. It's really tough to get a good seal. Even with Teflon tape, you're going to have a potential uh, minor, you know, a little micro leak. So, brass on stainless. Teflon tape works great. It's sufficient. Um, so that's what that was my advice to the guy. Get you the flow through brass and, and Teflon tape. You won't have a problem. 
get away from stainless on stainless if you can avoid it. If you can't avoid it, do what I'm doing here. I learned this trick from uh, Rex Farr years ago on my thermometers. Uh, that's JB Weld connecting this lifetime stainless nipple to the stainless Westpac soft touch trigger valve. They don't leak, man. They don't leak at all. And you get a good, long, durable connection. You can still break it loose, but it's way better than Teflon tape. I go ahead and make the ultimate stainless soft touch. Uh, and I make the uh, ultimate brass soft touch, too. And they all get that JB weld, at least as if I can stay ahead of schedule. Sometimes i got to use Teflon tape. But right in here, you want to... Um, put JB Weld. We'll talk about that in a second as we move down the line. But all of these got JB Weld. Okay. And uh, so they'll be all ready to go next week. Your choice, male and female. Male or female on the back. Okay. So we've talked a little bit about injectors. JB Weld here. Oh, here's a cool one. I wanted to talk about this. I finally had a customer send me another injector where it was completely blown out. If you can see that uh, hole through there. Big hole. Here's a brand new stainless one of mine. You can barely see the hole in that one, right? See the difference in the hole sizes? Okay, this one was completely blown out. He said he's been using Procyon for years. Maybe that is. Acetyl, I've used Acetyl for years. Uh, that's what's in Procyon, or uh, one of the ingredients. And it keeps my brass clean, so I always thought uh, phosphoric acid specifically is the acid we're talking. I thought it was kind of safe for brass, but apparently not. Maybe there's some other ingredients that were causing this. But he said this is an older one for sure. And you see the zero on there. That means zero years of life left in this thing. Uh, there's no closed system. If you remember another video I did where uh, you have to have somewhat of a close closure right in here so that you can get that draw coming up from the bottom, coming into that opening. where you've got this little closed chamber with the nozzle bushing, remember that? This whole little area, about a quarter inch little room, so to speak, needs to be closed off from the exterior so that you can um, create that Venturi effect across that little orifice right there. If this isn't closed off, there is no Venturi effect. It won't draw. It's like driving down the road with your window wide open. There's no Venturi effect. You close off that window to like three quarters closed and all of a sudden you, you're starting to feel pulling your hair out the window. Okay? So, but this guy completely blown out. If you remember I've talked about that. I've only seen this like three times. But you notice my uh, little hand file it goes completely through not a good thing this thing is toast so we fixed him up I got him on the phone he sent me three I believe and I fixed two and this one we just swapped him out to the lifetime stainless injector okay so anyway I wanted to show you guys that uh, it does happen um, takes a long time though can you imagine the erosion and the the chemistry, the chemicals going through there to cause that big of a hole. You remember this? I'm showing you guys these uh, four little rods from the welder's cleaning tip tool, uh, or whatever this thing is. Okay, um, obviously even the, the biggest tip cleaner is going to go through, no problem. But on a good injector, Depend on which one you got. The DEMA, I kind of modeled mine after DEMA. You're going to get only one of these four, these four biggest ones to go through. Can't get my fingers to work. There we go. One, two, three, four. You see them? One, two, three, four. 
okay and then in case of the uh, the wanders injector I think it's it'll pass the second one the, uh, the fourth third and second one yeah but it won't pass the biggest one okay won't even begin to pass it okay whereas this one that's blown out I could probably put all four of those cleaning tips through there together okay so this is a handy little tool that I'm using in, as a, in a real qualitative way to give an idea of the life left of the injector so if you get your injector back and it's got a little number on it zero through four that tells me tells you which which of the cleaning tips was the um, largest one that still went through uh, so it's, uh, it's a rough idea on the age of the injector how much more life you're going to get out of it uh, and remember these are brass you're not going to get near the length of time out of them as you will stainless so even though this is passing uh, the fourth third and second largest uh, cleaning tips it's stainless it's like a stainless jet stainless jets last four to eight times as long as a brass jet that's why you should never buy a wand with a brass jet. It tells you that the guy doesn't know how to make wands or he's trying to rip you off. Don't go for that. Stainless jets, okay? Anyway, no stainless on everything you can. Maybe I'll get over here and show you why in a second. Other than life. Uh, okay, so we've talked about that. Let's, let me see if I can rotate this phone over a little bit. But look, I'm getting my sandwiches ready. There's my uh, draw tubes. Got a bunch of them ready. Got my handle assemblies going. Cup runneth over. Joe valves. Got gators ready. Finishing up with the... Uh, in fact, let's just move down here. Finishing up um, some injector assemblies over there. Finishing up some uh, stainless ultimate soft touch trigger valves with the uh, JB weld starting into the brass okay there's a bunch of brass I, I got about 20 more to do what you'll see is um, I'm using JB weld to do this let me point at that for a second see way out there that's my JB weld <clears throat> this should be on the store but it's not on there yet you can buy it at the hardware store you can buy it from me this stuff's awesome it's a two-part epoxy you want to use 50 percent of each okay uh, so these trigger valves are going to get the uh, the lifetime stainless nipple going into the back the strainer behind that and they need either a stainless male or a brass female, depending on whichever one you guys want for your, your particular business. Okay, let's see. Um, let's talk about a little bit more about these uh, injector assemblies. Here's uh, just a handle assembly I'm working on. So that I uh, get a lot of orders for these, more than I thought I'd get. But basically we got the, that strainer assembly right we've got the steel tube the foam sleeve and then what goes in front here remember this guy right quick change adapter okay here's one that's been finished I forget these a lot so you guys are gonna be reminding me about it where's my uh, strap that goes with it well I forgot sometimes I do forget but I, I make up enough of them I don't forget I just got to grab and drop them in your box with the rest of your order okay so there's the handle assembly you would add the quick change adapter and then the uh, injector block and then the flow through QD on the front which uh, now you got a pretty much a complete assembly all I would have to do is drop the, the cap on there, give you a spring. Here, let's do it this way. 
fact, there's a guy that just ordered one of these, so um, we'll just make it for him. Can we see this? There's an injector block ready for him. I've already put the, the stainless nozzle bushing in there for him. That's this guy, right? Okay. Now all i got to do is finish it. He's buying the uh, injector swap program. In fact, let's talk about his order right here. Guy in Utah, Eric, he's buying uh injector swap program, 50 bucks, bundle of liners, and three trigger sprayers, uh, just the trigger only, okay? Real popular item. Okay, let's see if we can help him get his order right. Give me a sec here. good at this is uh, all these guys that do this for a living uh, hey talking stainless versus non stainless remember we talked uh, injectors this one's the one that's all blown out remember big hole looks like it's stainless doesn't it it's not it's brass okay in fact I'm the only one with a stainless injector lifetime stainless okay if it says Wanders, it's stainless. If it doesn't say Wanders, it's brass. What's wrong with black brass? It gets blown out too easy. Okay, here's another classic example. Two stainless nipples, right? No. The one on the right's mine. That's a stainless nipple. The one on the left is just like a glazed donut. It's just brass. If you look in there, you can see the brass. It's just nickel or chrome or one of the alloys plating on the brass. It helps with corrosion, but it doesn't help with life. This thing is, is, is weak, as weak as brass is. If you, if you screw this in behind a trigger valve, and suppliers sell these to you all day long, and your wand falls over, that's going to snap off, and you're going to have to use an easy out to get rid of this. This is brass, just nickel plated brass, maybe chrome or whatever they use. This is stainless, no finish. Stainless is kind of a dull color. Get used to what it looks like. This is stainless too, but it's been polished, right? Okay. If you drop your wand with a lifetime stainless nipple, it's not going to break, is it? It's not going to break. It'll break the concrete before this thing breaks. This is solid stainless. Okay, guaranteed not to break. Somebody show me one that broke. Ain't going to happen. All right, so this guy, he gets an injector swap. He's getting in on the injector swap program. 50 bucks. How's that work? What's involved? He's going to get an injector that he can swap to, right? There it is. Lifetime stainless injector. He's going to get a cap. He's going to get a quick change adapter, and we're throwing in <clears throat> we're throwing in the uh, <coughs> the front end for him. Okay, so he'll get this, he'll get that, he'll get the cap, he'll of course get the spring. Okay and the stainless ball and I've already put the nozzle bushing on there let's get some of this out of the way <clears throat> you'll get a draw tube right remember the draw tube if somebody was going to make a rebuild kit wouldn't this be kind of an important ingredient? Have you ever seen a rebuild kit for injectors, I'm talking? Injector rebuild kit that's got a draw tube? No. That's too much work. Nobody's going to do this. They're going to charge you $30 just for this in the supply stores. You kidding me? A sta good quality 50 mesh stain uh, stainless mesh screen strainer, Odeker clamps, 
Metering tip, by the way, is in there. Remember, if you forgot, my metering tips are in the bottom where they're supposed to be, so you can get at them and change them. Odeker clamp top, good quality stainless um, knurled knob. Everything's ready to go in here. Okay, um, this goes on, so he gets his cap. Let me just kind of throw this together so I don't waste too much of you guys' time here. So that's kind of what he gets for 50 bucks. This goes in his toolbox. It's ready to go. It's his backup. Or ideally, I'd prefer you guys get it. Go ahead and put it in place. Here's an, a handle assembly, right? He might have had this on his truck already. Well, the handle assembly doesn't come with this, does it? Doesn't have the quick change. You're supposed to get the quick change on your injector swap that you buy. Okay. And then uh, let me show you another little little technique that might help you. Excuse my dirty shop, Eric. You know, Eric's the one with the pristine shop, making all them fancy zippers. I ain't got fancy jack around here, but can you see? This is important you guys see this. Tighten. All I want to stress is uh, the doesn't really matter unless you're doing a bunch of these, but like I'm doing. But it, there's nothing wrong with with you guys doing it. Tightening your assemblies all in one shot if you can. Let's go ahead and do this without. Uh, yeah, I usually don't have this on when I'm creating assemblies, and you guys don't have to either. Get that good and tight. This my spring will fall out when it. There it is. There's no reason you can't do this, right? Go ahead and tighten everything all in one shot. Then you can get a consistent torque all the way down the line. After you've done a couple of these, you probably, I've had guys tell me the suppliers are tightening on their, their quick disconnects onto their solution hoses so tight they can't get them off. Come on, man. No reason for that. These things don't have to be that tight. Okay. I don't even know if I got Teflon tape everywhere I'm supposed to, but gives you the idea. I wanted to show you that you can tighten these things as assemblies. That's all I was trying to make the point of there. So anyway, he's got him an injector assembly that he can go right to the jug with and he's ready to go. Okay, So he took my $50 component, added it to his handle assembly and he's ready to go. Hopefully he's got the swivel things going on so that he can uh, Get, get a double swivel going on with a solution hose. That's pretty helpful. Okay. Let's see. Um, yeah, I wanted to tell you guys about more on the epoxy when I make a thermometer. For you guys, all of these connections here. Hang on, let me, let me adjust this thing a little. Here's the uh, 3 8 stainless T that my thermometer housing screws into. And all of these connections here get JB Weld. You know, I know you can use that red, red stuff. I just don't like it. It doesn't set hard enough for me. It takes quite a while to cure. Thread locker, they call it. A lot of people love that. Works good after it's cured, but with JB, it's, it's cured by the next morning. You don't want to run water through it, by the way, right away. It does need like 12 hours to cure. Okay, but nevertheless, uh, it works awesome. Once it is hardened, you're going to get a great seal anywhere you've put it. You notice you didn't really need the uh, JB Weld there. Brass on stainless, those, the brass being a softer metal, it will, you'll get a good seal here. Um, the brass will give 
and seal off any micro cracks or whatever in the connection there. So, but the rest of it gets JB Weld. That's where I originally learned that from Rex because I was send, sending out thermometers. He was putting them on his uh, RX-20, I think, back then, and, uh, and they would leak. Went to JB, never leaked again. Of course, you got to do it right. I've done a few wrong. Uh, but if you can try to remember that, stainless on stainless, use some JB Weld. Um, stainless on brass, Teflon tape. I wanted to talk about uh, another thing while we're here at the vise. There's a solution hose. This is this new hose getting pretty popular. The OEM. It's a real lightweight Parker type hose. Polyester lining, but don't let that fool you. This is some tough hose. Okay. Um, I want to talk about taking care of the Joe valve. One of the best ways to ruin a Joe valve is to break this connection right here. I don't know if you can see that. These aren't tight. I just kind of threw this together. But right there is a, a connection between two parts of the Joe valve. We put that little dimple in there on either side, and that holds those two parts together real well. But you're out in the field. For whatever reason, you need to change your quick disconnect. Um, or maybe you want to move your gator crimp down. You want to be real careful not to break that seal. You can do it even though the dimple's there. So put your wrench here and put your wrench here. Not back here. It's tempting if you're going to remove the quick disconnect, that is. So let me show you. You'd want to wrench there. And a wrench here, right? If I can get this working right. Do this one first. Okay. That way we're away from that seal. So you, here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to be back here and there because you, you might damage that seal right there. Once you break that seal, it's going to leak forever. I put an O-ring in there. There's four O-rings in this little Joe valve thing, but it doesn't matter. You don't want to break it. It's another reason you can't do a rebuild kit on the Joe valve. You break that seal, you'll never get it sealed again. So uh, be careful with that. If you need to take the Joe valve off, then you would connect, you would grab it there and back here, wouldn't you? That way you're not crossing that gap. You're n you don't want to, you don't want to grab it here and here, do you? That's not a good idea because you, you could potentially break that seal. Don't do that. Don't do that. Your Joe valve will last its full life. It's used to getting drug around. And uh, okay, another thing I was going to show you on this OEM hose that looks like a stainless fitting. Kind of fooled me. It's not really 100% stainless. I did a little quickie cross section on it. There's the stainless part. You can see that, but the rest of this is, uh, I don't know what that is, bronze, some sort of cast steel, I don't know, uh, steel alloy that is, but um, so it's kind of like got a stainless insert and then uh, some sort of alloy on the back. Let's go stainless, guys. Gators. Here's a steel gator, nice and shiny, right? What stainless gators look like? Kind of dull, like an unfinished, unpolished stainless. I don't know. I don't know that much about metal. Maybe that's polished too, but you can definitely see the difference between stainless and uh, steel, right? Actually, gators were having good luck with the steel, so you can go either way. I just wanted you to know the difference. When I get this OEM, boom, I'm cutting that thing off and putting a gator on it every time. Okay, you can do. You guys do whatever you want to. There's probably more and more suppliers carrying this hose now, and you're probably going to get their crimps, which is fine with me. But if you're getting it from me, you're getting gator crimps. Cause why? I've been putting gator crimps on every one of my hoses for like seven years now, mainly just to prove a point that they work. 
Okay. Now let's finish up talking about Eric's order in Utah. He's the guy getting the. Uh, see if we can get it up here again. The injector swap program. What do you get for fifty bucks? What do you get for 50 bucks? You go in a regular retail carpet cleaning supply house. Hey, I need an injector. You don't get you don't get an injector, do you? You get all this? Heck no. They don't even sell this. They'll sell you this injector block, this cap, maybe the draw tube, but you're pushing a hundred bucks for all that, aren't you? With the injector swap program, we're we're mainly trying to give you um, something you can swap to. So you're getting, let's see if I can clear this out, you're getting the injector. Let's see, I got to get over here now. You're getting all the guts to the injector. You're getting a, a lifetime stainless nipple won't ever have to be replaced. You're getting your cap. You're getting the draw tube. You're getting a quick change adapter for the back. And the uh, flow through QD on the front. Okay. So you're all set. Oh, here's a question I get asked a lot. What, what's the purpose of these little, these little thick washers? You see it? These guys. It gets back to that injector theory again. Wait a minute. Get where you can see it. See them? Okay. Where, where do they go? They go in the back, right? They go back here. Why? Remember, this screws in here and holds it in place. In reality, you don't even ever have to mess with this because you've got the stainless nozzle bushing. I got your back on that. Anything, any problem with the injector, you basically send it to me, I fix it. You don't have to worry about it anymore. But what's that plastic washer for? Sorry if I'm talking in circles. But it has to do with the injector theory. Let's see if I can find. Uh, yeah, here we go. Remember this from a long time ago? There's one half of an injector. It's like that right there. Okay? So we can look at the cross section. This is to be a good, a good, uh, Another good little project to study. What's going on here? That washer goes right there. Gets backed up with this quick change adapter so the washer can't move. The washer's really just filling in a gap there, isn't it? What's going on? Doesn't the um, nozzle bush bushing sit like right there? And then the little plastic washer is behind it. Some of these are metal, by the way, which is even better. I just made mine plastic because all you need is some support there. Okay, if you can see there what's going on. Okay, nozzle bushing, plastic washer, quick change adapter. This is going down into the jug this way. So it's actually pulling chemical up, right, out of the jug because of the Venturi effect created in this small little room right there. That little bitty chamber is where all the action is taking place. And there's the output side. And you can see how tiny that little hole is there. That's the hole that we're testing with the um, welder's tips, remember? You want that hole to be small so this remains a closed chamber, a closed system. This is a car driving down the car, driving down the road with the window just barely cracked. You're going to get a terrific draw effect right here. Why? Because that's a nozzle. That's just like a garden hose nozzle. It's a very focused flow. 
So we're taking 450 PSI, let's say, coming in through your quarter inch solution hose, going into the back of the injector, being turned into a super fine flow right there at the front of that injector inside this little closed system chamber. All right, that's what creates the draw. And the only way it can get out is through that other little hole. And the velocity is super fast right here and it drops the velocity tapers off with through this tapered hole but in here you've created one hell of a velocity hadn't you think about a garden hose you can screw the thing down on the front of the garden hose and it turns it into a really fine hard blast you can screw it all the way back and you get a nice wide fan spray with no no power behind it okay taking 400 psi forcing it into a little fine needle point pressure flow creates a ton of velocity inside which is creating that draw effect you got to have that taper you got to have that tiny hole there or it's going to not draw and that's what happens on these brass injectors when the hole gets too big okay you no longer have the venturi effect the hole's too big don't buy brass injectors again now i'm going to finally answer what this plastic washer's for what happens when you let off on the trigger of your injector gun? Okay, the pressure stops, right? There's no pressure at all hitting that nozzle bushing. All you got is some pressure that's built up inside the chamber. And what is it doing? It's pushing back on this nozzle bushing, isn't it? So it's just simple back pressure going on. If you got the wash washer there, it prevents the nozzle bushing from gradually getting pushed backward to the point where it falls out of the little socket it's in. Okay, it needs to stay in that position without the rubber washer, or the plastic washer that is. I call it the thick plastic washer. Without that, you get a few million gun triggers on and off, on and off. That little pressure built up on the front side of the nozzle bushing will push the nozzle bushing out of position. Now we're all messed up. There's no draw at all. So if you've put together your injector block without this, you're going to eventually get that. And if you got that, what happens? Nothing. No injector draw. You're wondering what the hell went wrong. You don't even know because you can't get into these things. They're very difficult to get into an injector block, especially the way the industry's got you guys all dumbfounded. You can't get into one of these things. You can't see that there's a nozzle bushing back there that just fell out of position, can you? Well, there's a tip for you. If it doesn't work all of a sudden, good chance nozzle bushing fell out of place. The only way to find out is to remove all this. Quick way though is just send it to Joe because this could happen to you too even if you're on board with the swap program. You forget to put this in. Three weeks, month, six months later the nozzle bushing pops out. It doesn't work all of a sudden. You don't know why. Send it to Joe. Joe fix it for you for free. Guess what? For free. Right? Well, well, it cost you $7.50 shipping each way. But was remember, I don't charge labor. I'm, I'm literally trying to get the whole industry dialed into the swap program so you never go into a supply house again having to do with an injector problem. Because you know what they're going to do? They're going to drag you over there and sell you a whole new injection sprayer. I don't know, Fred, but uh, we can fix you up right here for $180. Bucks. Don't let that happen. Have backups. The injector swap program gives you that system of backups so that this never happens to you. Or if it does, who cares? Grab another one out of your toolbox, use the quick change adapter, get this guy in position, go back to work. Got it? So that's the importance of this stupid little washer. You ain't got it, we're screwed. Now, when I was a cleaner, I actually made my own injector because it was just me. I could do it however I wanted to it and some of the guys bought it and they'll tell you my nozzle bushings were threaded. I screwed them into the back of the injector block. So there's no way they could pop out. You don't need that little plastic washer. There's no way it's coming out until I want it to come out. And then, you know, I would use a screwdriver to just unscrew the nozzle bushing. 
But once I get every one of you guys trained on the injector swap program, one day we're just going to switch to the threaded nozzle bushing. Right now there's way too many of you don't even know how to spell swap, much less what it's good for. No offense, but that's what's going on, okay? Once we get about, I got about maybe 2,000 of these out there, or maybe 15 to 20,000 you guys, let's get it up to 10 or 15,000 and we'll talk about switching. JB Weld again on my old uh, T fitting. You can see where I took off a, the uh, quick disconnects that were on here. You can still do that with JB. Stainless on brass, no problem. Stainless on stainless, you want JB. Teflon tape, I got JB there. Either way, JB works everywhere. It's a really good idea to use on all my wands that I put thermometers on. I'm putting that stainless lifetime adapter in there and you got to use JB Weld or it could leak. Here's a couple of things I get when I buy my brass. This one's from Foster. This one, a little white one. This one's from PMF. Brass parts on this product may contain lead chemical known by the state of, uh, known to the state of California to cause birth defects. You know, lead's not good at all. You guys remember a few years ago, EPA had to get the lead out campaign. That was mostly lead paint, talking to the lead paint manufacturers, but they were also talking to anybody using lead in their manufacturing. Brass still gets lead in it, um, incorporated into it. If you remember the old ProChem trigger valves, tough little valve, I'm talking the old original version. This guy, you guys know ProChem products, you know this trigger valve. Cast brass in prior years didn't have the, uh, the problem because it was loaded with lead, I guess. I really don't know. All I know is they were tough. And about the same time this campaign came out, this brass went to hell. And the sales on this exploded because it was less expensive, it's cast, rebuild kits are cheap, we did the stainless version as well, didn't we? This, this valve, I've probably sold well over a thousand of these valves for guys who used to use this. Get rid of this, brass is too soft nowadays, you've all seen it. Look at this fitting here on the front. I sell this on the store as part of the uh, ProChem Titanium Quadjet upgrade kit. And um, you can see how it's stripped here. If you go to take off your old ProChem valve, good chance you're going to strip this. So it's a good idea to get that, uh, get a new one. Okay, what else do I want to talk about? Boy, I talk in circles, don't I? But anyway, let's try to stay away from brass because this is, or minimize brass wherever we can. I'm, I'm uh, actually kind of going the wrong direction with this. I'm, I'm promoting that we put swivels on the ends of our uh, injector hoses for a double swivel action. But, you know, I don't care. It's so useful there. Let's, let's do it. Pretty much everything I'm doing nowadays is stainless. Stainless thermometers. Stainless nipples. By the way, I got a new stainless nipple that we're gonna you're gonna see it on the store pretty soon. I went ahead and made it because it's it's got multiple uses that the uh, that the three eighths is really not meant for. The three eighths is a I mean the uh, yeah this this uh, thermometer T uh, was has three eighths openings so that it can accept the the th thermometer you know that stem and, and allows us to not have to use a thermal couple on this thing to get a good a good reading thermometer but uh, this is a baby I just made I think you guys are going to like this this will make a good convenience hose quarter inch male both th on the side ports and then a, a female quarter inch on the bottom you'll see it in our convenience hose I'm going to going to this in terms of making the uh, 
the thermometer splitter I mean excuse me the solution hose splitter we're going to this because you don't need this 3 8 chamber so this will make the unit quite a bit more compact okay a few things we're doing around here so back to Eric sorry for talking circles here's Eric here's his order injector swap we'll finish with this and then I'll shut up he's got him a bundle of liners and he's got three trigger only's for his sprayers okay so here's how the swap would work in action he's going to get this this thing with the quick change in the back and the flow through on the front he's going to get the uh, good quality draw tube with a strainer and a four to one metering tip and He's going to get it all put into a package that, hang on a minute, <laughs> like I say, I'm not very good at this. There we go. Okay. I got his little box already. This is a regional box A. Okay. Made out to Eric. He's going to get his uh, his bundle of liners is going in there, right? He's getting his little three triggers. They're going in there. By the way, here's a little tip trick on the uh, the Tokol trigger. This is a solvent based trigger, probably one of the best in the industry. Uh, it's definitely got the the right O-rings in it. They can clog up though because it's a really tiny hole there. Uh, one trick I found for cleaning these things, they're easy to clean. You just kind of have to know what you're doing. Get it over the sink, get you a coffee can or you know a small pan, pull these guts out and try to clean because there's usually going to be some debris in there that gets in past that little strainer. It's not the finest metal.